Man, you said you were going to fight September 17th. You're going to fight September 17th. I get, yeah. You did. I guess, how important was it for you to, uh, to Kira? What was it about the date that you were just like, no, I'm staying on that date and I'm getting a fight? Um, I don't know. I just... I just wanted it. I just I, I was getting ready for it. The timing was perfect. My my game plan this whole year is to win fights, get tattooed, travel, and repeat. Like I'm gonna win a fight, I'm gonna go get tattooed, I'm gonna travel somewhere new, and then I'm gonna get my ass back to training and repeat the process. Like that's that's my goal and um, the timing was perfect. So I'm gonna win this fight this week here in September. Uh, and then I'll win again in December, and I'll just keep the train rolling. I'm gonna get. I really want to be active. I feel like every time I've sat up here and talked to you guys, I've said I'm trying to be active. Um, it feels like it's finally happening now. Uh, so I, I'm excited. I'm happy. Yeah. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to keep things rolling. What was the process like of getting another opponent? I mean, were you like vetting people, or does it, did it matter to you? No, I'm at a place where I'm. I really believe that uh, I can. I know I can beat anyone. I fought the best guys in the world, and I really believe that I'm I'm the best 45 in the world. And I and I haven't showed that. I haven't consistently showed that. I've had, I, in my opinion, I've had, I've, when I go back and watch my fights, I've had these flashes of brilliance. I've had moments where I really show, in my opinion, I show that I'm really great at fighting. Um, I've also had performances that don't show that. And so my job now is to consistently show those things and I, I can do that against anyone uh, anyone in the world. Bill Algio is a great opponent to do that against. I really like, he seems, I don't know him, he seems like a cool guy, he's got a great nickname. As a guy with an all right nickname, he's got a, he's got a pretty all right nickname and um, his style's fun. So it, it, was a, it, was a pretty, um, it was a pretty easy choice, you know, when he, he stepped up, which I, I wanna thank him for stepping up because Lando unfortunately got hurt. That was also gonna be a fun fight. Um, so saying yes to both those guys, uh, was was a pretty quick choice, yeah. He, Bill was here earlier, and he was respectful of you, but he did say, he's like, well, we were supposed to fight before, and something fell through and didn't happen. So uh, do you know what happened that time around? I don't remember that, honestly. I'm not saying it's not true. Uh, I've just I've been in the UFC for so long now that I, there's a lot of things that get talked about or um, fall through or whatever. I, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, I'm excited to fight him. He seems like a seems like a – cool guy and uh he's like i say he's entertaining but i don't remember ever like i don't remember him ever being brought to me i i definitely never said yes and pulled out it's not really my style um but yeah it, it works out we're fighting we're fighting in like three days so it's perfect good nickname good dude what do you think of his fighting style right kind of a, a an intriguing fight fun style. yeah fun real intriguing fight style he's, he's long he's a long rangy striker uh could say that about myself so um it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. Also, he beat the dude I just lost to. So if you do the MMA math, when I beat him, I will also sort of vindicate that last one. Um, and MMA is fucking chaos. So you gotta you gotta take those victories when you get them. You know what I mean? I mean MMA math. It's undefeated, right? I mean, Perfect. It well, I I actually saw something that makes me the uh, light heavyweight champ of the world after beating after beating. Um, what did I beat in Poland, Danny? Uh, Yep. It, uh, yep. Yep. I beat the goat. The goat. I beat. Yeah. Yeah. I beat Artem Lobov, and uh, when it was like thirteen. Yeah. yeah one hundred percent. Yeah. Because somewhere down the line, John Jones lost to uh, the twelve to six elbow from Hamill. From Hamill, that just fucks up the whole universe. And because I and Artem beat someone who beat someone, and I beat Artem, so you're looking at the undisputed UFC. Light heavyweight. I've made the argument for years. I just want to I've made the argument for years, and I'm glad, yeah. glad you believe me. If you vouch for me, then it says something. Yeah. I wonder, you know, given his exciting style, his intriguing style, did the fact that you were getting ready for Lando does that kind of help? Because Lando's kind of wild as well, right? Yeah, it didn't really change preparation much, except their body types are different. Their style really is not that dissimilar. Um, they're both they're both great strikers who uh, can also grapple. Um, I think everyone at this point is just is is a hybrid. I don't think you're gonna find anyone like my generation and younger. Like we're all guys who grew up watching the UFC when we were in eighth grade, ninth grade. We all started training everything at once. Like obviously, I wrestled first. Um, you probably wouldn't know that going into my fights. Like we, you know what I mean. Like I was a wrestler first, but I started training striking not far. Like by 14, 13, 14, I knew that I wanted to be in the UFC. And I think that's probably true for a lot of the guys my age and especially the kids younger. So there's, you're not really going to run into a guy that is, is a, too much of a specialist anymore. You're not just going to get a one-dimensional guy. They just, they're just, the sport's 
to evolve for that. So um, Lando's an exciting guy. He's a hybrid fighter. Unfortunately, he got hurt. I uh, hope he heals up quick. And Bill Algio is, is the same thing. He's a hybrid fighter. So the, the preparation didn't change much except the body types of the partners I was sparring, you know, and that's a minor adjustment to make. Last thing for me, I mean, I know that you say, look, I'm, I'm still chasing gold, but I don't know, does it make it easier to be like, hey, you know what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to fight, get a tattoo, and travel? Like, does that allow you to, like, I don't know, enjoy yeah. the process more? Yeah, I – it's like that Fight Club quote, right? Like the Fight Club quote where he says, uh, after you've lost everything, you're free to do anything. I've now officially had every single thing that could happen in this sport happen to me. Like, I've won close decisions. I've lost close decisions. I've lost decisions that – there's no, like, there's no way in hell. Like, I, I go back and watch the fight. Like, I don't. There's no way in hell I lost that fight. I've won. I've won one-sided decisions. I've knocked people out, and now I've been clipped. You know, like, I never went out. I've got a. I, I'm, I'm Samoan, so I got, I got a, I got a coconut head. I got a jaw on me, but I, uh, I didn't go out, but I got clipped. You know, and so that's. It was this horrible thing that happened. Um, I got clipped. I stood up. I looked at my coaches in the cage. I just went, yeah, sorry, man. Fuck, I got. He caught me. Um, but immediate, like it, it was this immediate shittiness. It was a horrible thing. But afterwards there was this almost, um, weight off my shoulders. Like I feel free. Like I, I've having the most fun through this camp and through this fight week that I've had in a long time The the, in a way the pressure almost feels off because I know how much people are counting me out and I know how much people have sort of resigned me to being just an exciting mid card guy. Um, and there's worse things to be, but that's not what I am. I'm an elite fighter, and I get to prove it to myself, and it's more about proving it to myself now than anyone else. It's, it's, it's in a weird way, it's, um, it's, it's a beautiful, man. It's freeing. Like, I got clipped, and it was the worst I felt in the sport, and then it was immediately followed by this sort of sigh of relief, and now I feel the best I've ever felt. So everything happens for a reason, man, and I'm just – Fucking happy to be here and, and, and happy to perform on Saturday. Andre? Yeah, brother. Um, so you, you performed stand-up a few days or a few weeks after you, your, your last lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was there. You, you, you did a very good job. Thank you, but brother. now that you've had some time to kind of think about it, how did you think you've done, you did well in, in your, in your stand-up? I've gotten nothing but uh, positive, you know, positive feedback. Um, maybe people are lying to me. If so, keep lying to me. That's fine. Yeah, lie to me. Um, but everybody's been, it's all been pretty positive. I went back and watched it, and uh, I thought it was all right. I'm not like, I'm not like a, some fucking big fan of myself. Like, a lot of these guys in this sport are, like, huge. You can really tell they're, like, big fans of themselves. Like, they really, they're the type of guy to, like, put their fight on at a party and shit. You know, it's like, it's not, it's not me, bro. Like, I'm not, I make music. I think I make really good music. Like, I make music that's good enough to stand on its own or be put in a playlist with my contemporaries and people who do that for a living, and my music's good enough to be in that plate. Like, it stands on its own. But I don't ever play my own music, you know what I'm saying? In the car, I'm not going to make everybody listen to my music. Like, I don't go back and, like, make everybody sit and watch my fights. I barely watch my own fights. I watch them enough to to take the lessons from them and, and make myself better, and then I don't watch them again. I've watched every fight I've had, no matter how good or bad it goes, i probably watched two to five times, like... If it's a short fight, we watch it more to get, but if it's a, you know, I, I watch, I watch my fights just enough to get the lesson, you know, um, and, and that transfers to stand-up comedy. Like, I, I watched it. I thought I did all right. I thought I did pretty good, um, but I wasn't fucking making myself laugh. I wasn't like, oh, I'm fucking great. I just, like, watched it. It was cool. I'm glad everybody laughed. Uh, it was, like, 300 people there. It was crazy, and, and I was getting a lot of laughs and a lot of great feedback, and it's something I want to do more. Um, I'm thankful for the opportunities, but yeah, I, everything I do, I want, I want to do as good as people who do that for a living. Like I want to be the best fighter in the world. And then when I do stand up comedy or I do music, I want the stuff I make to stand up on its own. And so that's why my stand up comedy set didn't have any jokes about MMA. Like there was no corny shit. Like no one else wrote my jokes. Like I wrote my jokes. I barely wrote them, honestly. Like I, I, I didn't have them planned that day. Like I just kind of wrote some ideas down and fucking went for it, you know, but, um, to answer your question, yeah, I think it went well, but, and I went back and watched it, but, you know, it's whatever, it's just, I, I'm glad for the opportunity, I just keep it pushing. This is probably a stupid question, but what, what were the nerves compared to going out and doing stand-up comedy? None. 
like stand-up comedy to fighting? None, nothing. What the fuck? No, nothing. I, I talk about that in the stand-up. Like, what the fuck can you do? Not laugh at me? Like, I'm still going to go get a drink. Like, I'm going to get off stage. I'm going to go get a drink. Like, I don't give a shit if you laugh at me. That's, like, a whole part of my, like, the most of my bit is about how I don't care if people laugh. Like, because I've been with the same girl for six years, and she don't laugh at any of the shit that I say. She's, like, five and a half years past laughing at what I say. So it's, like, it's nothing new to me. I'm not worried about it, you know? There's, there's no, after fighting, everything is just pretty easy, man. It's pretty, pretty, uh. There's not very much nerves, you know, whether I'm making music or doing stand-up comedy or any time I have a microphone in my hand, there's not really any, any nerves. I'm, I'm, I'm having fun. I'm enjoying it. Like, no one's going to kick you in the head. Like, you can fuck up. You can keep it rolling. Like, it's all right, you know. Fighting, fighting sort of is the highest expression of what a human being can do, I think, and, and it puts you on high alert, and you have to be at 10, you know. Um, and after that, everything else is just fun. It's just... You're just having fun. Um, and then finally for me, do you have a favorite tattoo? I don't know. I got the, maybe my grandparents. I have my grandparents on my bicep. Um, I have the Grinch tattooed on my calf. I like that one. Um, I have a big crybaby head. Like there's a, it's like a, a baby crying, but it's like, a, it's, it's also like a, this circuit. There's a, there was a, a famous sideshow freak uh the the zebra man or the great omi he was like a, he was like a circus performer so it's like a savage looking dude like with a with a bone through his nose and his whole face tattoo but he's like a little baby crying so that one's kind of like a one from that's like that's me that's like that's me cry baby savage like those two things like heart on the outside lover on the inside like so yeah uh I, don't know, I like them all thank you thanks andre have you ever changed your mind it would be unbelievable if you had people over play your fight play the stand up and have your music playing that would not be unbelievable i would literally rather drown myself in my pool than do that that sounds like a, that sounds like my fucking nightmare if i walked into someone's house and they were doing that i would just turn straight back around and walk out like um but but make no mistake there's a lot of people on the roster that would love to that's like their dream they would love to do that dude right on man well to each their own. Yeah, to each their own, yeah. As far as this fight can goes, it looks like you're just so relaxed, happy, you're smiling more than normal, which yeah. you know, was something else. Any specific preparation for your opponent, even with the switch? I mean, anything, any new bags of tricks we could look for? Yeah, I just, I sparred and moved around and got looks from tall, long, rangy guys. Um, I don't know, I'm, I'm having fun, man. I've just, like, I've done this for so long. I'm, I'm not I'm not that old, I'm 32. Um, I'm still pretty young. Um, but I've done this shit for so long. I've been doing this since I was... I saw someone today... Um, uh, I think it was Matt Schnell posted it. Shout out to Matt Schnell. What a psycho, dude. His last fight was crazy. Uh, he, was, he said it was his 10-year anniversary of being a professional fighter. And I thought, damn, yeah, I'm probably about 10 years. And then I calculated it. I'm at like 13 or 14. Like, I went pro in 2009. Like, right when I turned 19, I went. So it's, I've just been doing this so long that I've tried everything. Like, I've been very serious about every single piece of preparation. And I've, 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 I've been, I've done it every single way, you know. And I still prepare like a professional and I still bust my ass. Like, my work, I, I work harder now than I did when I was like, I, I work harder. I work smarter. I do everything better. I, my preparation's perfect. But in the execution, like, I've done this so many times and I've tried it so many ways that now I'm just at a place where, I'm enjoying that I get to do what I fucking love every day. And I'm, I'm practicing gratitude that this is my job, man. Like, I could be doing anything else. And when I was, like, getting arrested at, as a teenager and, like, getting in trouble and working a job that I hated and I said I was going to do this and no one believed I was going to do it, I just, I, I just practiced gratitude that, that I bet on myself and I was right. That's awesome, man. Thank you for sharing that. I'm sure... Showing gratitude, uh, enjoying it has to contribute to this longevity. Because if you didn't like it, yeah. I'm sure you would have already. Yeah, a hundred percent. You, I mean, I'm not out here trying to give like fucking advice. I'm not the guy. I don't have any big enlightened things. I can just talk about my experiences, and hopefully it helps people. But you know, all these little platitudes like that people say, like, "Oh, life is short, and you can do what you love," and this and that. All those like live, laugh, love ass quotes that you just you you get you hear them so much they mean nothing. There's some there's some, you know, validity to those things. Like doing what you love every day, 
if you're not doing that, man, like I can't, I can't, even, I can't imagine it. Cause I've, I've, I, I spent a couple years being miserable and grinding to get to do what I love. And then since then I've just gotten to do what I love every day. And I'm, I'm so fortunate, man. And, and life really is short. Um, Elias just passed away, you know, RIP. He was only two years older than me. He's young, man. Like you can, and, and I, I've, my, my life has changed a lot in the last year or two. I've lost people. I've gone through some, some pretty tough things and, like you could fucking die tomorrow. Like you really, and I'm not trying to be morbid. You could die tomorrow. You you could die leaving this building. Like you could, but you have to do you have to do what you love every day. Or you have to be spending time doing what you love with people you love every day. And I and I'm so fortunate that I get to do that. And um, I'm enjoying it. And I'm and I'm grateful for it. I appreciate that, man. Respect. And good luck on Saturday. Thank you. Appreciate it. For those that don't know, like myself, uh, what kind of music do you play? I mean, I'm looking at you, and obviously you, you read like classical, smooth jazz yeah, yeah. type shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah. you know, what kind of music do you play? Yeah. Are you familiar with the, uh, 80s boat rock? Sounds fun. No, I no, I don't do that. <laughs> uh, no, I I don't do that. I um I make punk. I make punk, uh, hip hop sort of fusion shit. Like uh, it's kind of Rage Against the Machine nice. inspired, but um. A little more rooted in like hardcore and and punk and some metalcore influences and stuff, but um, it's fun, man. It's high energy. It's I, I call it, it I call it punk. Like I make to me, I'm a punk vocalist, but the guys in my band are all really into um, like metal and math rock, and we're all we all love Rage Against the Machine. So it's just this kind of big melting pot of like, it's pretty angry, it's pretty aggressive, but it's also fun and 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 jumpy. So um, the band is called Born Breach. It's on Spotify and Apple Music and whatever. Um, with a nice wholesome name like Born Breach, you can sort of, yes. you can sort of, yeah, you can sort of um, picture what you're in for. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, and I mean, I guess which which frustrates you more at times? You know, playing a song, maybe not being able to work some stuff out, or going in the gym working on moves for a fight and maybe having a bad day. Which can be? Uh, oh, fighting, not even close. Nothing is like to answer all these questions. Like nothing is compares to fighting. Like, you have a bad day in the gym, and you just want to put your fucking head through a wall. Like, like, I, like I have days, everybody, but this thing, everybody has these days where you go, you go to the gym, and you spar, especially in a room like mine at Team Alpha, man, we have so many good guys. Like, sometimes you show up, and you have a spar day, and you leave sparring, like, do I know how to fucking fight? Like, you, like, looking in the mirror, like, what have I been doing for the past? Like, it's got my ass kicked by everybody. Um, which makes you better. You need, the, you need those days. Um, but that's infinitely more frustrating than... Like messing up. I mean, the guys in my band are much better musicians than me. Like, not even, it's not even close. So when they mess up, they really like care about it. When I mess up, like I don't give a shit. I'm jumping around. I'm like ripping my shirt off and th fucking jumping in the crowd. And like, I don't care, dude. I, my whole when we put, when we play live, my whole performance is one big mess up, and I'm just <laughs> fucking falling forward into it and having fun. The guys I play with are um, incredible musicians, though. So they're very technical and. They probably get really frustrated when they mess up, but comedy, music, art, whatever, like, I don't give a shit when I mess up because I'm having fun. Fighting is the only thing that, that frustrates me when I mess that I that I really care about when I mess up. Like, fighting is the thing that that I want to be perfect at. Best of luck. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Cool. Thanks, guys.